Alright guys, welcome back to Sucking on Island. I'm stuck with you guys and we are always smiling. Um, currently now we're just... If you watch the video previously when we were setting up the bait, you know, to start for tomorrow. Guys are here basically just um, working on their guns really quickly so that they can actually go out and spearfish at the moment. I'm just here observing and actually just learning the whole idea about doing this. Alright, so the whole concept there, the monofilament too short. So what we have to do, we have to use the shooting the, line. The monofilament is a, is, a, is a material for the line, yeah? Yeah, it's 500 pound test, but I want to look like about 300. Okay. Cool. Alright, this is a 500 pound test. It's say thicker than yeah. the, the regular. Yeah, but we don't have any crimps for this, so we have to use the, the smaller monofilament. Which we don't have more, we don't have any more of this, so we have to just work with this. Okay. So, you know, if we get it wrapped two times, you have to just come up, come back down, put it around the line release. Mm -hmm. You see, but one wrap no good. Normally, a two wrap we use because if I fire the gun, this just a go buck. And sometimes the reel might lock, yeah. and it just boom buck. So, we need to do a slot in the reel and use some of the shooting line. So, I come down with it and go up. So, and then hold it. So you basically just want to give it enough running line to yeah, start out. Yeah, enough running line. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. Oh, boy, I'm with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to crimp it up on thing, you know. I'm going to crimp this here, nigga. When you say crimp, I know it's like com <laughs> it's <laughs> combining two things together, yeah? Yeah, alright. All right, I'm going to crimp it first. <laughs> Sorry, bro, I didn't mean to try to crimp the new two them pine <laughs> Alright, so this is how you crimp it. Alright. You know want to crimp it on the exact end, like the edge of it, like this? Yeah. You want to come over a bit, like that, about that. And you just crimp. Okay, and that basically is why you use a tighter line to the spear. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, do the same for the next end. Leave out a bit. And then crimp it. Can't pull out. Ready for shooting. Right. So you have to see over there, sir. Yes, I watch you going. Yes, I get service up. <laughs> no, can I too like like is that you to me training? So from this time to know, I suppose I can watch him just work and feel proud and know say. I'm a, yeah, I'm a, a student. <laughs> Yeah. Alright, so here's, here's the funny thing about boats, like, you know, you only have your engine, right? And if you go out there and you fall into some issues, you have to know, like, how to problem solve to get yourself back in. Like, that boat basically has two motors, so I'm sure you should be able to come in back on one motor. But if you're running, like, on a one motor boat and you go super far out, I mean, I'm sure you don't want to paddle all the way. So, yeah, currently now we have a little issue with the engine. What happened? Like, electrical fuse, issue? Yeah. Fuse, like, so there's a blown fuse. Fuse is a very small thing, so you know, just one small thing can basically, you know, halt us a little bit. Alright, guys, so basically, I was on the blue. Uh, this was my third attempt going into the water today. Um, yeah, practice makes perfect. Uh, Raj and wildlife over there, so I go and suit up. I don't know what kind of fish, what the, what the aim, what kind of fish I'm saying around here, sir? Um, mutton snappers, um, mackerel. Kingfish pasta, though. So, mutton snapper, kingfish, yes, and sir. mackerel. Well, I should a mutton snapper today, so. so that's gonna be the vibe, man. Just gonna jump in the water, bro, and just uh, just do it. Let me know you wanted to Don't tell what you need
Alright guys, so basically um, came out the water, get something to eat, got a quick wash off. I'm just gonna give you guys like my um, my experience on this. Um, Cause I know most persons who are watching the videos definitely have never been um, diving or snorkeling or the whole experience. Um, first of all, it's a, it's a very harsh condition being out there in sea. Um, you know, from the, the excruciating heat. I mean, when you're in the water, you don't really quite feel that. But you get really hot, um, your skin gets a lot darker. You know the salt water in your skin as well it's it's a whole crazy vibe however in the water it's just it's not very tiring some persons might think about you swimming around for like an hour and a half two hours that is really hard for me it wasn't hard at all reason being i mean you're basically floating for most of the time so you're, you're trying to conserve your energy that's one thing um difficult parts for me still um there are times when water gets into the mask and you have to keep yourself afloat and get the water out and you know, concentrating between breathing from the mouth and not your, ugh, bruh. And then your sinuses can start acting up or your, it starts draining. Yo, it's a bit graphic, but those are some of the things that I've experienced out there. But all in all, what do I think about the experience? I think diving is like, it's it's super fun. Um, today is the first I actually went a bit to, to a level of depth under the water. Um, still working on, how can I say, you know, equalizing. So you hold your nose and you blow to kind of pop the eardrums a bit you know because there is a lot of pressure under the water so that's that's a step I have to um, work on um, so that I could be able to you know 
enjoy the experience because there's parts of the water that I saw where it's just like yo I would love to just go down there and just feel the sand or you know to see the fish down there but that's basically the vibe but anyhow um, what we're gonna be doing now is to go mackerel trolling at the moment so hopefully we're able to catch some mackerel or something of the sort um what else yeah yeah my hair this is this is a perfect example of of the, the the conditions like your hair gets really dry some persons when you see they dive or they surf their hair becomes like an orange or a yellow color you get the idea but anyway guys um i'll catch you guys on the boat oh also you need glasses yo because without glasses it gets really bright in the eyes and i left my glasses so that's the vibe i'll catch you guys on the boat Alright, so just to give you guys an idea, for those who don't know, if you're a boat fanatic or a fishing fan, you should know this. Let's talk about the positions of boat really quick. So right here we should all know this. This is where the whole Titanic thing happens when they went, ah! yeah, right here. So this is the bow of the boat, right? Then I always think of BS, like boat, yeah. So bow here is starboard. And then back there is the stern. Over here, I always tend to forget, but it's the port side, right? So whenever you're on a boat and people tell you, yeah, you kind of have an idea of the position of the boat. Um, no, this part of the boat kind of, yo, it kind of really tricked me out for quite a while. Seeing these, I always wondered what they really were. But I realized that they're bumpers. Basically, when the boat is actually coming back into the port, or whatever you want to call it, they throw these over to the side so what it does is that when it hits onto the side of the railing right. makes sense like a bumper car so that's the whole vibe oh cool for people who you know haven't been back to jamaica for a very long time yeah there are a couple um coast guard ships out there pretty fast so there goes one right there yeah, yeah. There goes one right there. Going by. See? Sure that cross. See? Alright, so we're pinning some baits. Basically you put the hook through the fish's nose. So we're gonna throw this one out again. Right? See? It's swimming already, you know, it's swimming in See that? Yeah. Some stuff that I learned. I don't know if you heard it um, previously, but those are the outriggers. So basically what it does, it allows the line to go a bit further away. So you don't have tangling of lines. That's the biggest issue, you know, when you're throwing several different, because the thing with fishing, you know, as I say, it's fishing, you're not catching. Meaning you're trying to increase the chance or your rate of catch. So the more rods you have is a higher possibility of catching a fish, right? But because there's so many different lines, you don't, you don't want it to get tangled up. So when you have one here, you can outrig it all the way up there so it gets a nicer and wider spread so that's basically the vibe right now
So wildlife has had that um, rod for about five years and a fish has never been caught in it. So we're trying to actually give him a bus right oh now. God. A huge possibility. So um, just drop in the comments if you think you can actually catch a fish on the rod after five years. Now you might notice me trying to show you guys the outriggers and the lines and you're not seeing anything. It's the same idea when it comes down to fishing because fish are smart, <laughs> to be quite honest. So if they can see a visible line, they kind of know that something is up because no, no prey that they have out there in the waters has a, a visible line following them. So when we have these clear lines, it gives you a higher chance of them not knowing what's happening. But yo, the Coast Guard is passing by. I'm going to show you guys that really quick. Funniest thing ever. As soon as soon as someone as soon as they hear a slight sound, everybody gets excited. Alright, I'm gonna try to record my boy right quick, so I'm gonna stop. Hey boy! Ah! <laughs> watch mine and catch your Watch me the hooker you. Watch the hooker and flash my spin. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Alright, guys, so right now Raj and Wildlife are sleeping, as you guys can see them in the clip. Because, to be quite honest, this is more like a, <laughs> it's, it's a very laid back kind of fishing experience, isn't it? The boat's probably going like what two knots, maybe three knots. I don't even know. You understand? Listen, you were sleeping. <laughs> Is it me? So, so right now the motor's just basically just in gear, no high speed, and it's just a like these type of fishing is just about just relaxing and just going up and down the sea. And if you catch something, you catch something. If you don't catch something, then you don't catch something. I'm lucky enough. We just caught a needlefish. Is that needlefish, right? Needlefish. We caught a needlefish just now. So at least. We get some out of it, um, but still praying for the snapper. No, <laughs> the mackerel, <laughs> the mackerel, the mackerel. Yeah, the the mackerel. mackerel. All right, about good. Yo, we're not the money. The money is not enough. Yeah, yeah. Here the cricket sees. Yeah. Side by side and through and through. No limit to what we can do. We know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright oh, You and I, we got it So you should be able to see that the sun is somewhere behind me Gradually going down Still haven't caught a mackerel or anything like that But again it's just 
fishing is just a whole relaxation type of thing. I think it's very therapeutic. So out here on this position of the boat. If you guys remember what it's called, drop it in the comments. I did tell you guys the forward position of the boat. So yeah, drop it in the comments and let me know how much you've been listening, man. <laughs> this is definitely the most action we've gotten since today. Nothing at all. <laughs> Smithy, we not catch a thing, brother. Not that, well, apart from the little wide mouth or long jaw. Yeah, yeah. So, as you guys can see, they're basically taking up the, um, the lines right now. Um, yeah. In some ex extent, you might believe that it's what you call not a successful um, venture, but for me, it was. You know, it's fishing, you learn about the techniques of how to catch a fish. It doesn't mean that you're gonna catch a fish. You know, sometimes the fish don't feel that they want to bite, so that's the whole vibe right now. And um, we're heading back in. Yeah, Captain, ready to pour the boat and thing and thing, so. Yeah, when I get back to the docks, I'll just close up the video. And that basically was that, yo, what's really messed up with these people just now, like they have this whole rope, it's like about, it's like six feet for me to jump across, like yo, but I, I made it, I made it, I made it and I'm good. But anyway guys, thank you for coming on to this video, for clicking on, if you are, if you have gotten this far in the video, yo, drop a like. That's basically one of the things that pushes YouTube to know that, yo, it's a good video and they will share it with more persons. And if you did watch an advertisement on it, yo. I appreciate that because this is a whole hustle. This is my dream, you know, going out there, just trying new things and then allowing you guys to live vicariously. And maybe in future, you guys can come on and try stuff like this. Remember these two things, guys. Love, nature, adaptation. And always remember, keep the link.